Mr. Robert Prasad. Robert, welcome to Let's Talk with Lakshmi. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Actually, I have to say thank you <laughs> for allowing me in your beautiful office. Now, a lot of people know that you are the Minister of Agriculture, but not a lot of people know who are you. So, my first question to you is where in Ghana are you from? Well, I'm originally from Burbese. Uh, my parents are from the quarantine. Mm -hmm. um, so, I'm consider myself born and bred Burbishan. Burbishan. Now, I, I personally know a lot of Burbishans. I'm very hardworking. And uh, Burbish is, is pretty much known for rice, right? Yes. Rice, sugar, timber, okay. crops, cattle, everything. So did that <laughs> maybe inspire you to get into what you're doing today? Um, there's uh, nearly everyone in Burbish um, would have engaged in some form of agriculture. And in fact, because of the economic structure of Burbese historically and even in recent times um, whereby close to 95% of the people who live in the county of Burbese depend directly or indirectly on some form of agriculture. And so it's, it's a form of economic existence and sustenance uh, for the people there. So growing up in Burbese as a child, what type of hobbies did you have? Uh, interestingly, um, I, you know, I've, we straddle between Burbese and Demerara because my parents um, came to Demerara a bit early um, in, in my early years but um, I've always viewed and looked at Burbese as my home um, and always look forward to school holidays or even some occasion to return to Burbese where my cousins and relatives were there and it was the simple thing that um, naughty little boys would do um, you know doing things they're not supposed to be doing. Hmm, what, what is that? <laughs> uh, what does a what? typical naughty little boy from Burbies do? <laughs> might, might, might be a mystery. You've got to find that out. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, perhaps you have to get a Burbishan, very close to a Burbishan, you've probably learned that, so we can't give you all the secrets. Oh, okay. Um, but it is, uh, you know, doing the, the things in, in a country setting, country life, um, very basic things because those were times when, you know, children today, I look at my kids, um, they have toys and devices that I can't even figure out. Um, for us it was simple tire, running around the place, looking at an old building and pretending um, that it was something else, a, a derelict vehicle, uh -huh. um, playing with the animals and, 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 and it was a basic of, of thing because the Hard economic situation, yes, that. yes. And for me it was top of the life um, activity, it was not for, for me anything simple. Uh, anything in the ordinary as such. Um, so it was just a regular Guyanese, Provision, um, boyhood days for me. Childhood days. Now you mentioned your family. Tell me a little bit about your family. Do you have siblings? You're yes. married, obviously. Yes. Your children. Yes. Yes. I. I. You know. I. First of all, I. I came from a home um, where four of us. Um, my biological father died when I was. Um, just under two years. Um, uh, he died whilst working in the Black Bush Pool, the scheme, and that's why I always have this also that affinity to um, to agriculture and think he was attached to the scheme and died in an accident whilst, whilst working there. Um, and then, um, you know, I, my, my, my mother moved on, and then um, we there were three of us from the original, from my biological father. And Is then, it three boys? No, okay. two girls and a boy, and then um, when my um, then my other brother came along, um, when she started a, a new family, and and it was quite an in interesting experience too. It was a bit of cultural shock because this was someone from Georgetown, mm -hmm. this was a, someone of uh, mixed um, race. Uh, um, you had issues, cultural issues to deal with in the communities, and you know sometimes. And he was much older. What person called my father is much older. Um, you know, 30 something years of, uh, of um, older um, than my mom. So, mom. so you had all those uh, dynamics, and it was quite interesting for me and for all of us because it, it taught us lessons um, that we were 
getting without even realizing what it is, the type of lessons we were getting in socialization and in, in how society views different habits and, and view relationship, um, even relation, um, lessons in ethnic relations and, and so forth. So um, growing up was, was for me like in a lab. In a lab, how do you uh, operate and live within a multicultural society such as ours? And I can imagine that's probably influenced how you handled people in your business today, in your job, in your position as Minister of so Agriculture. First of, yeah, first mm -hmm. of all, um, we, we came from poverty. Okay. And I'm proud to say that because it gives one an understanding of the roots. Um, and I've always considered myself to be part of that category. The, the poor and the underprivileged, notwithstanding you know, what I've done academically or what I've done in my work or even what I've done outside of my work mm -hmm. um, for my family, I've always considered myself part of that strata, that class of society, the poor and the underprivileged. And for me, it allows me to ground and never forget where I came from because um, you know, if you look at my, at my situation, right. uh, someone one year, nine months, father died, didn't leave anything. Um, didn't have the economic means, and if I could have um, gone on to university, done my uh, masters, be enter politics um, from the age of 16, um, and just focused and, and, and literally built from nothing something, um, it for me it's 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 something that I pride, and I would want others to have that experience and to have that level of achievement. So. Um, anytime I, you know, I go into communities and I, I look at a kid, I, 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 I see that person perhaps uh, a leading entrepreneur. I see in, in that person uh, an academic, a lawyer, a doctor, um, a worker, a farmer, a minister, and even perhaps a future president. I always see that because it's it, it is it is having that personal strength and that courage to overcome and. Uh, it's, it's something I don't talk about. Mm -hmm. I don't talk about myself. The first time I'm talking about this on television. Okay. Um, but but it's 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 a story of coming from nothing and from rags to riches. Yeah, but I don't think well, for the riches. I, I don't but know. Life, life experience. <laughs> life I mean, experience. your life experiences has influenced. I would say what you're doing today, and to know that you've come from like you said nothing. I mean, you're a young boy. Your father died very young, and I would say, um, you know, guy, and you say. Um, Blue good breeze on you. I I hope so. I hope so. But I want to go back to your academic days. Where did you study? Did you um. Well, St. Like, Joseph's High School in okay. in Georgetown, University of Ghana, where I did, read my first degree, and then the University of uh, West Indies in Barbados, where I did my master's degree. Um, I've also um, done some studies in the in New Delhi, India, okay. as well as in the United States in Washington. Um, those are for short term. Uh, um, so it's been a uh, been hopping about a bit. Now I want to touch upon that. You mentioned UG and the different universities that you study at. How did you pay for this? I mean, were you working also and going to school? Yes, um, every single day at my university life, both university. Even when I went to um, in India was a scholarship. Okay. Um, so I was grateful for that. Compliments of the Indian government. Also in the United States, was a program facilitated by the U.S. government. But the University of Guyana, I work every single day, and I must be, say I'm very grateful to Mrs. Shanda Jagan because I was uh, at the Merrill newspaper, mm -hmm. and she gave me time off um, in terms of uh, giving adequate time off so I could have gone to university and then lose pay, um, which was important because, um, you know, as I said, it's not like we have my parents or, or the family we, we could throw back. Um, same thing at, at the going to Barbados. Um, I would get on an aircraft on Friday, on Monday morning, and uh, leave George, leave home at about 3:30, and I must thank my wife for that because that's how I was married, uh, married and putting up with that and hitting classes by eight in Barbados, and then on Friday afternoon I would jump back on an aircraft and um, be back in in Georgetown and work through the weekend um, because the program was such that it wasn't required every single week, but it was very very often, and again I must must thank um, persons who helped, including the government. Um, because I was an employee, the government was able able to do that. But even if I was in Barbados, I would be working, because I was working at the office of the president at the time. So um, for me, I never took study leave. I never took study leave. And 
in fact, I, when my brother was pursuing university studies, I told him the same thing. Um, and in fact, when people come to me for advice and even parents and, and some of the children don't like to hear it, I say, find a job. University yeah, is, uh, yeah, university, you can do both. And when you come out, you become much more marketable, much more effective, and perhaps much more versed uh, in, in, in what you do. So I work my way I through. I think you appreciate it more when you work your way up. It, you value it more. You value it more. It's, so it's, it's, it's been something like that. You know, it's, um, it's, it's hard work. It's tough. I was, I've never been the best of students. Okay. Um, not an A-plus student. Okay. But I, I've taken a, a, that, the position in academia that I'll do. I'll do enough to, to be above average. I'm, I'm sure you're really influencing a lot of our viewers right now, especially the younger yes. children, to hear your story. Right Vitamins is your premium provider of quality men's, women's, and children's vitamins, pre- and post-workout supplements, cleansers, fat burners, teas, and personal care items. We also have in stock workout accessories. Right Vitamins is your source for leading brands such as Maxi Muscle, GNC, Muscle Tech, BSN, Gaspari, Stacker 2, Jack 3D, and much more. At Right Vitamins, we encourage you to live happy, live healthy, and live right. Visit us at 6A Alexander Street, Kitty, opposite the police station. So, Mr. Passat, tell me, what are some of the responsibilities as Minister of Agriculture? As Minister of Agriculture, it's, it's you know, agriculture comes for close to um, 30 percent of our GDP um, and you have areas that fall under the ministry are rice what we call the crops rice sugar the other crop sector fisheries we also have drainage and irrigation mm -hmm. we also have um, a bit of um, the research that we do within within agriculture we have we handle a bit of um, climate change managing some of the large agricultural schemes such as the MME um, and other so, and then we also have again the forestry sector too. Um, so it's 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 a, an array of, of subsectors. It sounds like you have a lot under your hat. <laughs> yes, it's a matter it's a matter of, like of a having a good team. Okay. And what I've done here, because you've had previously you've had two ministers, so what I've done here, uh, you we try to assemble the best team um, of competent officers and and provide guidance and support and. And I must say, I have an excellent team within the Ministry of Agriculture, and a lot of them are young persons too. Okay. Um, and I've always, I've not have a bias, but I've always um, looked at the areas where I can promote young people within the sector. And encourage them. Okay. Yeah, and, and if you look at the management of the of the sector, you find there are persons who are um, reasonably young, and some, and just to give persons that um, that I'll break because um, mm -hmm. whilst yes, we have to value experience and recognize the contribution of elders. Um, for me, the future lies in our youth and our, our young people, and they have to be entrusted in the country. We will make mistakes. I've made mistakes. We all make mistakes. Okay. And um, that's how you learn. You learn uh, from your and exactly. You become wiser after you would have recovered and moved on from every mistake. Mm -hmm. So what would you say are some of the challenges facing agriculture in Guyana? Uh, one is the dealing with the effects of climate change. Um, because we found that the situation has become um, has deteriorated in that sense, um, where the events you used to see one in twenty years, you're now seeing them one in five, one in three years. Mm -hmm. um, so you have extreme situation. Also, um, looking in terms of the international market situation, uh, because we are a primary commodity exporter, we're very vulnerable to commodity shocks, up or down. Um, so that, in a way, poses a challenge. Um, also, lifting and modernizing. Our, our farmers and the culture of farming in Guyana. It's a challenge and we've been working aggressively. We have a number of projects in that regard, modernization of farming, um, and we've made some progress in this regard. Um, but